Okay, so let me introduce myself. My name is Fan Yang, CMT and trader, Forex trader, um, analyzing and trading the markets for about five years, five, six years now. So uh, I'm a technical trader, but I also, you know, I monitor the fundamental events as well. I, I you know, it helps with um, the risk events, help with timing of things, and, and you know, help confirm or could make things complicated as well. So uh, let's get started with the euro dollar. Pretty sure that's the, you know, since it's the most traded pair, and most of you are probably trading the euro dollar. Um, I want to start. Well, I'll start with the our one hour chart because we've seen the dollar fall. I mean, euro dollar fall uh, from these 1.31470 70 highs here. Now, recently, last week, we broke below key support levels, 1.28, um, and I think 1.2750 was also important, and now that's broken, I feel like there's some more room to fall for the euro dollar. Okay, so um, in the medium term, you know, the market should remain bear bearish. Now, in the very short term, we are seeing an extended divergence in the four-hour chart, um, you could say that you know the decline here is falling into a wedge, okay? And if we break above this wedge, we could be in some kind of short-term correction against this decline, which still could be in the context of a bearish market in the medium term. Now, some of the technical signals like that point south in this four-hour chart. Um, first of all, I mentioned the break below 1.28 and so far holding below 1.28. Um, you see the RSI here, tag uh, 30, failed to break above 60, and then tag 30 again shows uh, development of the bearish momentum. While back here we had it swing back and forth, there was no clear momentum in this four-hour chart, but now it seems like it's picking up to the downside. Okay, but we do see some short-term oversold kind of condition here uh, that that uh, the market seems to be resolving at the moment. Okay. Um, now, as far as planning a trade, um, I think you know that's ultimately what we want to do uh, from analysis. It's not just you know we just we don't just follow the market and. Uh, uh, for entertainment purposes, although some of us might. But um, if we're trying to plan for another swing down, let's first of all look at what, you know, how much further we could fall before we meet some support factors. Uh, one of the tools that we use for retracement targeting, uh, the Fibonacci retracement tool, we see 50% at uh, 1.26. Also, sort of the top of this consolidation area, okay, and also you see back here, support area here. So 1.26 up 1.2620 area. That would be the short-term target to the downside. Okay, okay. Um, the more aggressive target for this is back down to the to where this this trend line started. You know, we also broke this trend line. Uh, earlier last week, or maybe even two weeks ago. Okay, so this was a, you know, it was a pretty major development here with the market falling below the 200-day moving average as well, and your RSI here uh, falling below six, uh, 40, excuse me. And for me, that means um, we lost the the bullish momentum, and you know, with all these technical. Uh, developments, I feel like it is opening up to the downside. Uh, like I said, short term, 1.26 area up to 1.2620. Um, that's where I think, you know, if we get like a bounce and then we hold under 1.2750, for example. So going back to the one hour chart, you know, we, maybe we get this little bounce here, you know, test our, our uh, previous day's high, maybe even crack it, do a little clear out type of action, you know. We could see that a lot, even within the within the context of a decline. You know, I think we're still looking at a bearish market. Uh, you know, we could project that at least right now from 1.2750 down to 1.26. Okay. Now, if the market extends above 1.28, then I'm going to be uh, I'm going to 
be hands off and you know, look for further development because that sort of uh, sort of makes things cloudy. It, it's you know for n for now things seem you know the market seem seem clearly bearish, and for me, as long as it stays under 1.28, it, it remains focus to the downside. But above 28, you know, I'm not sure I, I need to see more development. Uh, you know, it does introduce some bullish outlook, but again, I'm not uh, I'm not turning bullish right away from that break, um, but it does take away the bearish outlook a bit. But for now, you know, I, I would look for some near-term bullish you know, correction. You know, 1.2750 area, 1.2738 area seems to be uh, where there could be resistance. Another thing you could you should look at is the RSI. Uh, I mean, I, I always look at the RSI uh, as an indication of trend. You know, um, con tra traditionally, conventionally, you know, RSI is an uh, oscillator representing momentum, and then when when it's under 30, it shows you it's over. So when it's above 70, it's overbought. You know, that's one way to look at it. Another way is, you know, if it stays under 60, for example, and is able to tag 30, then that shows you development of bearish momentum. So if the bearish momentum is to maintain, you know, uh, then the RSI holding, the one hour RSI holding below 60 should be a uh, a confirming kind of technical development. Okay, so if it holds under 60 and pushes back below 40, because if it's be between 60 and 40, we could expect some narrow consolidation. But if it falls back below 40, then we're likely in, in, a, in a bearish uh, continuation. Okay, so that's the euro dollar right now, looking for some near-term uh, correction. But I, I still believe there's room to the to the downside. Okay. All right. So that's the euro dollar. And uh, you know, with all these dollar crosses, um, the fundamental backdrop uh, is going to be, or the fundamental uh, driver for the next couple of months, months, you know, into 2013 is going to be the fiscal cliff, right? If you um, if you look at headlines these days, the number of times fiscal cliff, the term fiscal cliff comes up is like a thousand times more than it was before Obama was elected. Right? And, you know, we, we all knew that after the election, this was going to be on the table. This was going to be the big issue to deal with. And, um, you know, we knew that after the election, it would be, you know, the focus will be on the fiscal cliff, you know. Uh, before it, it was just impossible to deal with it, but now that's the that's the main thing. And you know, there's really you know, to to simplify it, it's either going to be a risk on or risk off event, right? Um, if there's some resolution uh, on the on the fiscal cliff, I, I would say as far as timing, that should start this or next week. You now there are some meetings uh, this week. I think Friday between. Um, the Dem Dems and Republicans uh, in trying to get an initial inclination of how they're going to deal with the fiscal cliff. So, you know, I think after this Friday into next week, we're going to get some inkling on not only on how they're going how how uh, politicians are going to deal with it, but, but how the market is going to react to the risk on risk off. Because one thing that complicates things is that, you know. If it's risk off, usually the U.S. dollar gains, right? Risk off, you know, people, uh, like the, okay, uh, money flows into risk haven currencies like the U.S. dollar. But this could be a, uh, if it's fiscal cliff related, risk off could also hurt the dollar. So that's going to be a, uh, we're going to see which which forces win out. Okay, I tend to think that. You know, like the last time we dealt with this type of uh, situation wh when they had the debt ceiling, um, the risk off going into that debt ceiling was dollar positive, even though it was, you know, based on U.S. news, you know, risk off from U.S. Uh, news. So I think, you know, it's going to have, 
it's going to be if it's going to be risk off I still think that the US dollar will gain and if that is so the euro dollar is likely to slide further and on, on top of that on, on top of the fiscal cliff uh, you know, fundamental driver we recently had more concerns about the eurozone I mean it's it's the same uh, song and dance right um, you know Greece with its debt problems uh, extending the, the debt, uh, giving them more bailout. Um, but I think the main thing is that Germany is starting to feel it. So that's the driver lately of uh, euro euro neg negative sentiment. You know, German Germany's economy is finally feeling it, and uh, if that if German Germany's economy is you know, can't be the, the the stronghold, then you know eurozone. Uh, is in, in trouble. So that's the recent driver for the euro dollar uh, downwards. Okay, um, okay, so I'm going to take a look at the chat real quick with all the euro goings on. Do technicals still matter? I mean, I think um, in the very short term, technicals will probably get chopped up a little bit. You know, meaning like if we're going to get some kind of consolidation. You know, we're going to get some kind of choppiness, and it's going to be hard. We're going to see twists and turns, where it's going to be hard to uh, pick pick a side, right? Um, so, as far as technicals, I think all these headlines that we're going to see in the next couple of months, they're going to create some technical developments, um, and we we have to see what happens after that. I think what so so I think what's going to happen is you know there's going to be some some initial fighting, you know, Dems and Republicans, they they don't just sit down and work things out right away. It's I don't see that happening. So maybe some headlines in the beginning will be negative, which would fit into the euro dollar continuing to fall. Um, but I think as as uh, we close into the head to, to the deadline to to the end of the year, um, if the euro dollar indeed has fallen a lot. I think it could be one of those times where it's you know it's sort of buy the rumor sell the news right buy the U buy the U.S. dollar uh, on on back of risk aversion um, and then sell it when you know when the fiscal cliff actually arrives and I think uh, with the sense of urgency you know our political leader as well eventually have to crank out a solution and. At that point, if the euro dollar is overextended to the downside, it would be a, uh, in my opinion, an opportunity to uh, play the the risk event uh, the other way. Okay. Will money go into bonds, T bills? I mean, yeah. I mean, U.S. Treasury. I think uh, that's sort of still the safe haven. So, I mean, that could help the U.S. dollar. Um, as 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 we continue to have negative headlines, you know, surrounding euro, surrounding fiscal fiscal cliff. Okay, so in the short term, in the medium term, I still see the downside in euro dollar. I think at the turn of the year, though, um, we could shake things up, uh, back back up to risk on. Okay, um, that's you know that just just remember that's an opinion. I'm not you know married to it. It's sort of a you, you you sort of have to you know have do have to have an opinion, but you can't always stick to it if things change. So that's my opinion for now. So we'll see if that develops. If if indeed we'll we'll start next week with some negative headlines coming out of uh, some initial meetings in Congress. Okay. Um, all right. So I think uh, that really sets the stage for other dollar crosses. Uh, let's take a look at the pound dollar um, in similar vein to the euro dollar. I think there is some further downside. You know, we are at the 200-day moving average here in the pound in the uh, in cable, um, but I think you know breaking below 1.59 was very crucial. We had some uh, pivot uh, you know, support resistant pivot, 38.2% retracement. You know, this shows us. Uh, some extension to the current correction. This still could be a corrective, you know, corrective swing. Uh, and I think um, 
key support now, the next key support now is in this area, 1.5780, 1.58 area. Rising trend line, 50% retracement, um, pivot, resistance pivot, support pivot. Here we saw some resistance as well. So 1.58 area, a little bit below it. You know, we, we might get a clear out and still be within the context of a, you know, a, of a bullish trend. But when you look at the daily chart, no, there's not really much reason for a bullish uh, outlook. In fact, with the price here, we're pretty much neutral. We're in the neutral zone. You know, if, if you look at this as a, a range between 1.63 roughly and 1.5260-65 area, then we're pretty much in the middle of the range. And if you, you know, trade this, t this time frame, looking at daily charts, holding positions for weeks, this is probably not a place for you. Um, this is probably only a place for very short-term trades to get into because even the bounce here is not necessarily uh, going to take us all the way up here or even a breakout. In fact, if there is a rally, the further it is from the 200 moving average, the, fur the more tension it will be to come back down to it. Okay, so that's the concept of uh, a range-bound market, because in the range-bound market, there's sort of a central equilibrium where the price is quote unquote, you know, fair. There's, it's not really a uh, strict definition of a, f a fair price. It just means, you know, price seems to be revolving around there. So the further you go away from there, the more likely it will return back to it. And uh, especially when, when we get into our resistance zone, for example, pound dollars resistance zone was 1. you know 60, up to 1.63. Support zone was 1.53, 1.54 down to 1.5260 area. So th you know, right now cable is probably not in the best position to make a, a play. Um, if you look at the very short term, maybe you get some kind of a bounce. You see this here, resistance 1.59, 10 area showing. If we get a, get above that, maybe we get. You know, what I like to do uh, when, when we get when we get range breakouts like this is get a, a guide for a breakout projection. So uh, up to 1.59, 70 area maybe you know, towards this 200. I mean, 200-hour uh, moving average. That could resolve any oversold conditions. That, but we don't we don't even see oversold conditions anymore in the one-hour chart. It's resolved. Um, so uh, you know, I, I still remain bearish in the short term. But if it does come up here, you know, I would look for further uh, downside towards 1.58. Okay, um, and then we'll see. I want to see how the market reacts here. If we break below it. Okay, I would say there's an inclination to the downside. But once again, keep in mind of the range-bound uh, mode in the daily chart. So, you know, limit your downside projection. You know, uh, most aggressively it will be down down to this area. Um, and if it does, I would start scaling out. But uh, if it doesn't, I, I would respect some of these uh, lows a little bit higher, around 1.55 maybe. Okay, in the very short term, 61.8%, 1.5665 is the target for the break below 1.58. Okay, but if it does extend, like if it rallies and then it it can't break back above this middle middle pivot area, okay, and then I would look for a further downside. Okay. All right, so that's cable. Um, I do want to take a look at Aussie dollar. Well, Euro dollar and the cable seems a bit, you know, Euro seems bearish, cable seems sideways. Aussie dollar seems like it's trying to build some bullish momentum, but it, it has stalled in November so far. You know, in the beginning of November, we had this little push that was, uh, that was I think that followed the RBA. 
I have to look back to that. But the, the, the main thing is this push broke above 1.04 and this, this resistance area that, it, that was holding the pair for a while. But after that break, we come back right back down, testing our support area, our rising support area. Okay, even cracked it. Okay, but so far, it's still staying above it. And today, it's still staying above 1.04. Okay, so it's been choppy, but it hasn't opened up any bearish outlook for me in the Aussie dollar. Okay, when you look at the, the RSI here, it's, you know, I would say there's a very small, slight bullish bias, but I, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't even pay attention to that because we don't have really have the RSI push above 70, but we do have it stay above 40, which is you know, a good sign for the bulls for now. Um, a break below 40 would probably uh, turn turn it more sideways to bearish, but for now it's sideways bullish for Aussie dollar. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go to the one-hour chart and look at this. You know, you see this test here uh, in the past session of 1.04 of the 200-hour moving average, and it's staying above. It's staying above, and if it it can push above this 1.044, uh, 1.0440, then it opens up this high here. Okay, maybe you can you can you can use a swing projection as such. Okay, gets close to that high. Okay, with all this, um, with all the the fiscal cliff. Uh, Headlines looming. Maybe we don't have, you know, such a strong pr projection. Maybe, uh, you know, the further, the, the closer we get to this high, the, the more we we, we would want to scale down a position, or uh, maybe even just take profit. You know, put a trailing stop type of type of thing. Um, because I think, uh, you know, right now, instead of uh, direction, I think the market's going to start getting choppy. For the Aussie dollar, it would it would mean stopping its bull run and getting into sideways market. For the euro dollar, it would mean you know, some some further slide. Okay, so I think Aussie dollar right now uh, has a better chance of uh, rallying at the moment. Okay. Okay, so euro dollar pound dollar Aussie dollar. Um, another pair that I'm very interested in is the dollar yen. One of my strategies going into 2013 is I want to build some carry trade uh, positions. Carry trade positions haven't been doing well in 2011, 2012, well, well, for 2012 at least. Um, but I think they will be doing better in 2013. Uh, I think risk is coming back on. Um, although fourth quarter we might get some some pullback, as we already seen in the fourth quarter. Uh, if you look at stocks, S and P 500, it's been um, it's been retreating. Um, now for dollar yen, I tend to think you know risk on would be positive for dollar yen. Um, so I think last year I think we built a bottom. 2011. I think no. This was off the the record low here, 75.56. Okay. So now, you know, we looked at euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar in sort of a medium term outlook going into the next month or two. For the dollar yen, I'm looking more a long term outlook for like, you know, to, for for 2013, the play throughout 2013. Um, that is, you know, I, I reflect that by looking at the 2011 bottom. Then you get the 2012 uh, rally coming out of the bottom. Then you quickly get a very sharp retracement back to test this 2011 bottom. And so far, that test for me has passed. For me, if we stay above the middle of this range, I mean, preferably we stay above the top of this range. Okay, And the top of this range Sometimes you can't just look at the tail. You should. You have to look at uh, where price kind of kind of clustered around. 
So here we saw price cluster around this area for the top, right? And we see price here also cluster around here for the bottom, even though we sort of poked through it. You know, these clear out actions, we have to we have to expect that. So we did clear out, but for the most part, hey, we are respecting that 2011 bottom. So 2012, the development has been a you know a break of the 2011 bottom and respect of the 2011 bottom, and that's what's building my theory that in 2013 we could be you know we have a chance to for the market to come off this bottom. You now we are seeing an initial swing here to come off that bottom, um, and I think we can continue to build. Okay, so. You know, I do have some positions down here. Um, I'm holding through. I'm holding my positions throughout this this uh, pretty sharp pullback right now, throwback or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's really just 38.2 percent so far, right? Um, now, as far as structure goes, I'm, I drop down to the four-hour chart to look at the September to November rally. For me, this could be a development, you know, one, two, and then sort of a wave three development here. And if this is wave four, then this high and this low should not really overlap. Now, there, there could be times where you, you see a tail, you see absolute price overlapping like this, but it's important for me, uh, the close is more important. Okay, so so far there isn't any, there aren't any closes that overlap. So for me, the structure of a bullish impulse wave developing uh, is intact. Okay, at least this count seems intact for me. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, three, four, and this could be developing into some kind of consolidation for the next couple of months because of the fiscal cliff. Um, you know, headlines that we're going to get. You know, for now, it looks like, hey, maybe we want a bottom here. We see some some range highs here around 96, I mean 79.65. You know, maybe we break above that. We get some short-term rally, but uh, I, I wouldn't be aggressive yet. Um, in fact, let me, let me say this. I, I did build some more positions coming down to he, uh, here. Now, I looked at the structure before, and I saw, you know what? I'll take a, I'll take some risk here. That that this will hold up. And so far, it's holding up. It's not like looking that good that good yet. Um, what I think is it should continue to 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 consolidate a bit more uh, before going higher. Okay, so dollar yen. That's my play for the long term. Um, and we'll see if that works out. You know? um, if it doesn't work out, uh, what the market should do is break back below the 61.8% retracement, 78.47. Okay, and then it's it's pretty unclear for me. It could be, you know, developing a really longer, a much longer term consolidation just on top of our bottom here. Okay, but in the long term, I still think it's possible to build long positions uh, based on this this bottom. Okay, so we'll see. And this is more of a hold hold a position for a long term kind of uh, play there. Now, speaking of all these, speaking of carry trade, um, I did get on this Aussie Swizzy. And I'm, I'm holding. I'm going to hold this for a while now. Uh, let's let's take a look at. Let's go all the way to the weekly chart, actually. Okay, so weekly chart. Um, what I see in the weekly chart is this market sort of attempting to build a bull, bull run here. Uh, what you see in the RSI in the weekly is tag 70, uh, hold above 40, and continue rallying. Now price has started to make bottoms above the 200-week moving average. Okay, so I think, you know, going to 2013, Aussie Swizzy, 
you know, has a chance to come back up to these highs up here from 2008. Okay, and that would be sort of a long-term hold here, um, going towards 1.07. Um, yeah, so. No, I mean, it's not going to be in one straight line like this, although so far it's been a one, two, three, four, five, six straight weeks. If this week is bullish, it's going to be six straight weeks of bullish price action. You know, I mean, look at this swing here. This previous swing only had two weeks of bearish price action, and one of those was very insignificant. And this one, you know, didn't even get down to the, get down below the middle of the previous candle. So very weak bearish uh, correction against the swing. Let's see what kind of swing we get here. Now let's go back down. Here's the daily chart and this is where uh, you know this is where you know, we had we had this bearish swing. We had uh, the market here bottom out, the RSI here pushed back above 60 in the daily chart. Okay, so that was key for me. Um, for getting back on this rally, okay, break above the 200-day moving average, above 97 pivot, okay, I got in a little later than 97, uh, but right now, you know, I, I could see some correction, you know, but I think I, I'll try to hold through the corrections um, and look for further buildup. I mean, carry trade means you know you, you hold a you're buying a currency with high interest rate and then uh, selling currency with low interest rate. So Aussie Swizzy is a good candidate for that. Um, and if you have a bullish outlook on it, it's a double positive. You know, you get the interest rate spread and you get uh, the bullish outlook. Okay, so Aussie Swizzy. You now Aussie Yen is another another candidate. So let's take a look at that. <clears throat> For Aussie Yen, uh, maybe it was last time. Was I in this webinar where I talked about this this range, and the market was at basically at the range support? Okay, I think I talked about it back here. Okay, it came up, failed to break above these highs, came back down again. This range support held, and now the market finally broke through. Okay, it broke through, but there's a pretty good uh, throwback right now. Now, this throwback is so far respecting the 200-day moving average. If it does, that's going to be a very key, uh, very important clue for the upside. Okay, um, and for me, this breakout, you know, again, you use a conventional way to, to target I'll project the breakout from a range is to take the range, the width of the range, and project into the direction of the breakout, which gets into these highs up here, 8770 area. Okay, so that could be the target for this breakout if it confirms. So maybe let's get down to the lower time frames to see if we could uh, monitor this throwback. Okay, so this throwback in the four hour chart so far has uh, respected. No, more or less respect of this trend line, even you know, meaning when we do have these breaks, price action co uh, immediately comes back up. Break comes right back up. So, you know, it's not really, uh, it's not really broken. Okay. Um, as far as the RSI goes, this here broke below 40, so that's not really good for the bullish momentum. Okay, but if we see the RSI push back above 60, you know that means despite a, a despite the choppy throwback, uh, we still have bullish momentum. Now, if we fall fall below the 200-day moving average, which uh, you know here, 200-day moving average at 82.25 uh, area, and then we fall below this uh, 50%, 61.8% then the breakout to the no then the bullish outlook should be should be shelved for for now uh, for further sideways action and in fact it introduces the bearish outlook because this would be a false breakout 
a clear out, and that actually builds um, you know, strength to the downside. Okay, so we're at, we're at that crucial point here, seeing if the market can can uh, can indeed build from this breakout, build further bullish uh, momentum from this breakout. Now, I would really like to see the RSI push back like this above 70, price push back up. You know, above this 84 area, and that would help me build the case for a rally towards 87, 70 area, and maybe even up to 88, 60 area up here. Okay. Um, as far as the weekly go, you know, you could try to build carry trade, but I think you know when you look at this weekly chart. Um, you know, sorry for this, all these lines that I drew in the in the shorter term but you know, if you ignore these and you see that it's pretty much ranging okay then uh, the, the higher it gets the closer it gets to 90 the more you might want to you know, take the take your foot off the pedal here for the for the upside um, and look for some medium term pullback pull back towards the middle of this range. Okay. So in the long term, you know, Aussie yen maybe not as good, I think, uh, for the carry trade. Well, until, you know, I think it's good until we get close to 90, then we got to be careful of the currency risk. Um, but I think, you know, very long term, it's we could start building here. I mean, the best it would be really good to build from down here, right? If the market does get down here, uh, as far as carry trade goes. But you know, we're 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 already in the middle of the range, looking for some bullish action. So uh, I think uh, medium term bullish action after some choppiness uh, for the Aussie yen. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Um, I'll take a quick look at some other, you know, let me know what other pairs you guys want to look at for me to wrap up today's session. Uh, I do want to quickly take a look at the CAD yen at a range low, uh, or nearing a range low. So that's, there's a, an idea here for support. Okay. Up to you if you want to if you think this will hold. Um, as far as RSI goes in this daily chart, I think there's some bullish uh, bullish bias, tagging 70, and then falling between 40 and 60. Um, that represents consolidation, which is pretty much what price action is showing here, range bound action, and now again 40. If it holds above 40, the bullish bias still remains. Um, although to the upside, we see this declining trend line going all the way back to 2010. Okay, so that's the upside is also limited right now to this uh, range resistance. But if you do do break above this range resistance and this decline trend line, that's going to be a major uh, bullish signal there. But for now, let's you know, not get ahead of ourselves. If we do have a bullish outlook from this support, you know the the maximum target would be up to one, you know, 8140. In fact. The middle of the range often should be uh, you know, around 80. Should be the con sort of the conservative uh, target for this. Okay. Um, okay. So Aussie CAD from Chuck. Okay. No, you're here somewhere. There you go. Okay, so there we go. Aussie CAD. Uh, I I was actually short the Aussie CAD here, and then uh, heading into the RBA deci decision, it pretty much took away everything, and then after the decision. You know, the market showed very strong uh, continuation, and we do continue. Uh, we had a little 
uh, flag pattern here in the one hour chart broke above that and we continue if you look at this one hour chart okay this is the type of play um, that I, I use the RSI for you have a breakout yeah well you have a bullish swing okay this doesn't uh, say much just yet because the, the top here was held under the previous consolidation high um, then it went into a consolidation or correction and then strong price action to break out of it now this development here held the RSI above 40 and then pushed it back above 60 which is a sign that it's gonna it's building more bullish bias or more bullish momentum in the one hour chart at least and we saw that develop a few times and again it's developing so the bullish momentum in the short term is holding on right now in the Aussie um, Aussie CAD okay now let's go back to the higher time frame looking at the daily chart okay um, upside potential 1.0595 resistance support pivot okay so I think that is a logical target in the medium term okay um, you know in the four hour chart we are we're gonna start getting some overbought conditions soon maybe you know, uh, I wouldn't try to go against this rally though this is a very strong rally and um, you know, if anything you know if you feel like there's strong resistance or if there's there's some kind of bearish divergence uh, showing and then you get a strong bearish candle maybe you do get a correction okay but let's say this RSI right comes up to 70 does some kind of bearish divergence and you do get a, a decline then I would start looking for the decline as an opportunity uh, when it gets to like 50 40 area when the RSI in the four hour chart gets to 50 40 area I would uh, you know I would also check with price action to see if we get some kind of um, if we get some kind of uh, support area for example right now this previous resistance is key support okay so if the market comes back down there 1.0380 up to 1.04 could be key support. Okay, so if that, you know, we see market hold there, we see the RSI hold above 40, that could be a sign of bullish continuation. And as we said, it seems like we have further upside uh, in the medium term towards 1.0595, uh, 1.06 area. All right, Chuck. Yeah, it's good to see you here. Forgot that uh, you were always in these webinars, and Boyke too. Okay, so that's it for me for today. Um, I think the main thing you guys should monitor. I mean, everyone's going to be monitoring developments and you know, the headlines for the fiscal cliff, and just see if that how that affects the U.S. dollar. See if. Uh, the conventional risk on risk off where risk off is dollar strength risk on is dollar weakness see if that still remains and um, the, 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 the one play I'm looking for right now the longer term play uh, surrounding this risk event is like like I said before you know euro dollar falling toward, towards uh, oh, you know being oversold extended uh, when it gets close to the end of the year if it is overextended and it is you know, uh, driven by risk off then look for a turnaround uh, after the end of the year okay alright so that's it for me for today thanks uh, thank you FX Street for holding all uh, these webinars and uh, thank you guys for your attention you, know, you can always check me out uh, let me just give you my email here fyang at fxtimes.com and uh, when you're not on FX Street, uh, come check me out at fxtimes.com as well. All right. So that's it for today. Uh, trade well, trade safe. Have a good one. Bye-bye.